All right, I'm back. I know I went MIA for a couple of months there. Long story short, I was out chasing Burbit and crashed my snowmobile and uh, didn't really leave my house very much for about a month and a half, but I'm getting recouped. I just feel like a stiff old man, but I can get out again. And I'm gonna bring you a lot more videos this summer, so I hope you're ready, because I am, after being cooped up. And today I'm gonna do something that, uh, it's probably my favorite way to catch a walleye. Throwing Ned rigs, shallow, early in the season. Water temps are still only 55 on the big bodies of water, 60 on some of the littler lakes. And once you hit that 55 to 60 degree range, their moods change and they get snappy, and you basically get to bass fish for walleyes. So let's see if we can scrape up a few. Oh, finally. Dude just had to bust out the Ned rig. <laughs> It is definitely a walleye. Just tossed in a little pod of four or five suspended fish with a Ned rig. First cast into the pod. It's game on. This is a magical time of year where you don't need minnows to catch walleyes a lot of the days. You just need a little something something bouncing around on bottom. Yeah. Is that the wrong species? No, oh, no, it's the right one. Old clipper. <laughs> right. That was not the prettiest boat flip, but weird hooked him in the bottom of the mouth. He missed that bait twice. I could feel him chasing it, pecking at it. Just slowly dragging a Ned rig. The fish in the edge of just a big kind of sand flat. And these fish are cruising in like 12, 13 feet kind of on the edge. Yeah, these aren't really schooled up. They're just kind of pods of two fish or four fish and they're moving fast, just cruising along this sand edge. And we're just uh, slowly creeping along and every time we see a pod pitching at them. And so far that's two for two in pods of fish that are three, four fish. So I don't even know if I'm gonna stop on singles anymore. I think we're just gonna cruise until we see that little pod and let that Ned jig hit bottom, slowly drag it, and I do little six inch hops. So it's just, and uh, sometimes I'm guilty of setting the hook too hard with a Ned rig. Really with these sticky little hooks, you should just do a, a reeling sweeping set where you reel into them with a softer medium light rod. Let's try to keep duplicating. There's a couple right in front here. See them? Got two of them 40 feet in front of the boat. That one looks like he's getting kind of chasey. Pretty cast, my bait's messed up. That's why I didn't get bit. Would that help drastically? Right under the boat almost. All right, so this guy's on the 316 sounds. Ned rig jig, a little too big to boat flip, but. <laughs> and 90% of the time I'm using either an eighth ounce or a 316 ounce. And uh, eighth ounce when it's calm and I'm fishing say five to seven feet of water. Once I start getting out in that 10, 12 foot stuff, that's when I bump up to a 316. I will occasionally use a quarter if you got white caps and rollers. But those two sizes pretty much get it done all over and Usually I'm a green pumpkin kind of guy, but there's some days if you had that little splash of chartreuse on the head, walleyes get a little nutty over it. And the thing with the Ned rig is you're just so fast and efficient. You're not messing around with bait. That's why I love fishing it. It's you're making cast, 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 staying on fish, moving, and uh, you're not losing a dollar every time a shiner falls off. I'm not gonna throw anybody under the bus, but the dude in the back of the boat today is pitching around shiners, and that's Ned rig three, Shiner Zero. So it catches them. It's not just a, a vanity lure and it works all year round. Like in the spring, I love throwing it on shallow sand and gravel. Places where those walleyes spawn and now they're out cruising that lip before it breaks off into deep water. In about two, three weeks here, once the cabbage grows up nice and thick, I'll do the same thing, but instead I'm casting at little points and pockets and cabbage and coontail weeds. And uh, it just, it literally catches fish all year round. And by adjusting the weight of your head, the size of your bait and how you fish it, you can fish it all throughout the year. I don't know, it's just a special little unit, it's so fun. 
I usually am using an eight or 10 pound braid and about a six or eight foot uh, eight pound fluorocarbon leader is kind of my universal setup. Just love the braid for being able to snap it off of weeds when you're doing that or uh, feel that tick uh, and know it's not, you know, a rock you drug into or a zebra mussel clump and uh, confirming it's a fish before you sweep into them. So this one is a little better. That's a big one. It's definitely a walleye. Just thumped it. Look at them shoulders. It's so cool in the clear water. Yes. Thank you. Whoa. All right, another chartreuse head eater with a four inch TRD. I have noticed that uh, four inch baits, whatever you're throwing on the back of a net jig, is kind of the size for walleyes. Once you drop down to that, two, three inch size, it seems like you get a lot more bass. Four inch is just kind of the deal, whether it's hair jigs, plastics, flukes, four inches that max, or that happy size. And with that fish, I was casting about 50, 60 feet away. And one thing I've noticed, no matter what you're throwing, the days of vertical jigging are, are coming and going. There's still occasions you can get them under the boat. Dirty water, of course, windy, windy days. I mean, I caught that one earlier when I got about probably 20 feet away from the boat and it's still bit, there's something sometimes about that change in angle of your bait and your line. But for the most part, if I can cast 70 feet out, that's my sweet spot. They'll eat 40 to 50 feet away, but at 70 feet, I know they have no idea I'm there. And it's crazy since getting any live units, how many fish I can see. Once you get within 30 feet of them, you watch them turn around and swim away. It's just mind blowing. So keep that in mind no matter what you're fishing, what you're pitching, is back off those fish. Clear water, zebra mussels, more fishing pressure. There's more people out every day. And something that's kind of unique to a Ned rig is I've noticed that I get so many bites in the first 10 seconds. There's something about casting that bait out there, letting it fall to bottom, and it seems like when you pick up your line, it's either mushy and there's a fish there already, or the second you move that bait a foot or two, just a couple rips, they hit. So like for me, I would rather cast out there, fish it for 10, 15 seconds, and reel in and cast again. I just have so much confidence that when that bait falls down, they're gonna eat it. And I've also watched fish on live. Uh, you think of walleyes as bottom suckers, bottom foot, bottom two feet. What's kind of interesting is I've noticed since getting a live unit, walleyes are almost always suspended off bottom like three, four feet when you're fishing this set shallower sand stuff and gravel. And it's actually the smallmouth that are tight within a foot of bottom. And uh, I don't know, you can watch them on live, you cast your bait out there. Those fish that are four feet off bottom, sometimes seven feet off bottom, will swim straight down and pin that net rig to bottom and eat it. And it's so weird because you'd think you'd want to throw jerk baits or something suspended in the calm for suspended fish. But it just depends on the day. Some days they're feeding down, and some days they're feeding up. And you hear guys talking about that when it comes to pitching jigs. You know, there's days where you want a 16th ounce or an eighth ounce jig and keeping the bait up above their head. And then there's other days, like this whole spring on Gull, uh, we've had to just drag those jigs, use stand-up jigs, use heavier jigs, drag them on bottom, and those fish were feeding down. And I don't really know the science behind it. The only thing that I've ever noticed that kind of correlated to that was uh, it seems like you get more fish feeding down before the shiners push up shallow. Uh, right now, the shiners haven't pushed up to spawn yet. Every fish we throw in the box is spitting up perch. And for whatever reason, it seems to be more of a down bite. But once the water gets into like that 60 degree range and up, you get those shiners pushing up shallow to spawn. And then it seems like those fish want to feed up off bottom. So something to keep in mind that we've been noticing on actually all the lakes around the central Minnesota area that uh, I don't know the science behind it, but if they keep eating it, I'm gonna keep doing it. You know what? I think we're gonna end this video on that big fish. Doesn't get much better than that, right? I'm still gonna stay out for a couple hours and uh, get a few more hook sets in, but hope you enjoyed watching. Walleye fishing doesn't have to be boring. Throw some plastics, fish aggressive, fish fast, and uh, bass fish for walleyes, man. That's by far my favorite way to catch them. And a Ned Rig is one of the most universal baits that there is. 
all season long I'm gonna have one tied on and uh, I seriously you got to try it I mean don't take my word for it just go out catch a fish on it you're gonna be hooked